Hi guys, this is the third part of the Brewing with Coffee series and this is the first brew. So we're gonna taste this, we're gonna go through the recipe and in the end we're also gonna draw a winner from the coffee giveaway competition and also discuss different methods how you can add coffee to your brew. So hang on! So guys, first let's have a look at the brew footage and then we'll come back and taste the beer and go through the recipe, draw a winner and uh, yeah, talk a little bit more about coffee and beers and coffee in beer. Yeah, cheers! Let's get this crushed! Mash out. Let's add the dark grains. Soak them for 15 minutes. The sparge is almost ready. Yep, calling it. I had a little boil over, but just a little one. It was Mikael Bernelin's fault, making me Google up some pictures of uh, cucumbers on my phone. The instrument. Don't know what it's called in English, really. We'll put a picture of it here. What you call that instrument in English? In Swedish it's called gurka, which translates to cucumber. Maybe it's the same. I don't know. In goes the first hop edition. 20 grams of magnum. Let's start the clock for a 60 minute boil. We're at the 50 minute mark. In goes some finings and uh, yeast nutrient. I also added the cooler and the uh, Wurflock arm. I will put a link to that video as a card or down below or both. I've just opened the valve here for the circulate system. But five minutes left. That's 30 grams of saphir hops. Turn on the pump slowly. At first, until the system equals out. Now we can. Push up the speed and control it with the valve. That's from the outside of the pump. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna circulate now to sanitize everything. Uh, doing a whirlpool, get more out of the hops and the cool down faster. So it's a win win situation, and this pump is the shit. Ain't had any issues with it, and this whirlpool device. Simple DIY build works awesome. I'm thinking of building a better looking, maybe easier to use device. This was a prototype. I will make some modification to it. I can use the old one, just make some small mods. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna start to cool in four minutes or so. Let's have a look at the whirlpool. As you see, the water stands still in the middle and we have a whirlpool action going on and that's what's collecting all of the hops and the troop in the middle so we can draw off the beer and leave that behind not all of course but but very much will collect there i will show you after we have transferred the beer transferring the beer with the pump down into the fermentosaurus Hydrometer reads 1049 as well. So if the hydrometer reads 1049 and the refractometer reads 1049 and the tilt reads 1049, the OJ must be 1049. Yeah. Giving the uh, beer a one minute blast of oxygen. Just put over two bars of pressure on it. If you haven't watched the uh, Firm to Source and Tilt video, I'll put a link down below and uh, of card. The uh, tilt now reads 1049. 
45. So a little bit under, and that's from the pressure. Temperature probe tape to the side. I adjusted the spandit to uh, just over two bars using the uh, thermometer. We're gonna start this at 14 C. It is hotter, but the fridge will take it down quite fast. The Whirlpool collected everything in a centered cone there, so it worked great. Next morning, sitting at 14 degrees Celsius, and fermentation is going like crazy. Big Krausen, and activity down here from the spandit. I'm gonna check the uh, tilt reading. Hundred grams of coffee, one liters of cold water. Need some more. I spilled some. I'll get that stir and then we'll pop that into the fridge for tomorrow. So the Ethiopian coffee has been cold brewing overnight in the fridge. I'm gonna transfer it over to the coffee press without spilling. Gonna give this a taste. There's a lot of coffee in there. Oops. Okay, let's taste it. Smells fruity, beany. Really, really fresh roasted. It's like dipping your nose into a coffee bag. Okay, let's taste it. It's almost a little chocolatey. Very nice. Not so much roasted coffee, but really, really fruity and nice. Earthy. Let's go with that. I was thinking if I wanted it more to be more like a coffee style, if I should maybe use the uh, espresso roast instead, but uh, hey, let's, let's use this one. It's even like oats. No, at least in Sweden we do this chocolate balls like candy with oats and uh, butter and sugar and uh, cacao to form this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not just the sweets who make them. But that's what it smells and tastes like a bit without the sweetness. We're gonna take that with us when we come back and taste the beer. I will uh, pasteurize this. I will heat it up to um, 72C and uh, chill it down because uh, I don't want any nasties in the brew. I talked to Fredrik about it, the guy at the uh, coffee roastery. He thought it would be fine to do that even with a cold brew. Fredrik can comment down below if he have any other suggestions or you. The risk of getting an uh, infection at this stage when the beer is more or less fermented out, we have a lower pH, we have alcohol in there, it's extremely low but uh, just to be safe I want to do that. I don't think the uh, coffee will hurt. Okay, let's do this. Sanitized. They should be the same size. Okay, I have to 
sort that out. 869, 70, 71, 70. Okay, done. Sanitized as well. Don't think the pet bottle will melt, but just to be sure, put it into cold water. Hope I don't burn myself. Bottle number one. Bottle number two. Okay, let's chill them down. What I will do now is transfer them over to the Fermentosaurus. I've made a video how you can do that. Transfer a seal to a Fermentosaurus or keg, a pressurized vessel. From one vessel to the other, I will put a card to that video to keep this video short. But I basically just pressurized the bottle and then release some pressure from the fermenter source and the liquid will draw itself from the small vessel to the big vessel because of the pressure is higher in the big one etc uh, but have a look at the uh, the video if you want to see the whole procedure okay that was the brew day over to the beer so i decided to make a schwarz beer one reason for that is that i'm doing a long term just uh, experimenting thingy so i wanted to brew a lager a schwarz beer is a dark lager it doesn't have to be black but it should be dark it can be much lighter than this one this ain't uh, like pitch black but it's very dark i can see some redness here some oh, readiness maybe yeah Comment down below. The coffee I used was kindly sponsored to me, Fredrik, over at Café Rostit Koppar. I'm gonna give you a bottle of this beer. Please send more coffee. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's coffee all right. Malty, not so much hops. Okay, let's dive in. Cheers, guys. It's a very hot day today. If I'm sweating, I apologize, but you know, I'm Swedish. I'm not used to this kind of heat. And you really got that coffee lingering in the end. No rosiness, no astringency, something like that. Light mouthfeel. Easy drinking beer. It's a very good looking beer, if I say so myself. Can't find any flaws with it, something like that. I've let this sit for about two weeks, which uh, helped it like round it out a little bit. We clear it, I got. I think it's turned out uh, quite nice beer, like well fermented out lager, good looking, with some hints of uh, coffee. I know uh, when I tasted the cold brew, I said it tasted like uh, what we call in Sweden for uh, chokladbollar, uh, chocolate balls. It ain't that chocolatey actually, but it was just 100 grams of coffee going in. I think that amount is quite good so let's go through the recipe then we're going to draw a winner who wins a fresh pack of specialty roasted coffee from Café Rostrit Koppar and then also we're going to talk some more about the ways of adding coffee and some of the flavors from the different coffees I got from Café Rostrit Koppar this batch I'm really hoping to get some more so we can push this series even further but let's go through the recipe oh just got a comment here on from Mark Worthburn amazing video doctor it's like the Justice League super brewers coming together brilliant crystal clear lager cheers this was on the uh, my um, three beers lager put a link to that one below thanks mark for the comment okay coffee white beer the recipe also goes up on my patreon site in the dr hans recipe book 
for you guys who want that. And this is for a 23 liter batch. I use two kilos of paleid malt, 1.6 kilos of Munich malt, 300 grams of wheat malt, 200 grams of crystal 60, 150 grams of acid malt, but that depends on your pH and alkalinity, so don't take my word for that. I used 150 grams of carafa 2, 150 grams of oats, 100 grams of carafa 3, 20 grams of magnum at 60, I use some yeast nutrient and uh, protaflock, 30 grams of saffir hops at 5 minutes, and this was fermented on old yeast cake. Uh, it's a mix between uh, safflager 3470 and Mangro Jack's uh, Bohemian Lager M84. I think I started this about 14, 15 degrees and then I ramped it up. So this were fermented a little bit lower than, um, for example, the uh, three day lager. And uh, this made me have to, uh, like, uh, lager it, condition it. Because uh, there were some um, sulfur there which weren't in the quick lager when I fermented it hotter, so take that with you, I'm doing that for sure. So there you have the recipe, okay, the big final moment, we're gonna draw a winner, who wins the coffee from Kaffrostrit Koppar? And then after that we're gonna talk a little about more about the coffee I got from Fredrik, and also let's talk a little about more some different ways to add coffee into your beers. Let's put up the random picky comment finger YouTube picker. Yeah, and let's do happy winner. Good luck you all. Thanks for commenting. And the winner is Jabalini Brewing Company. And his comment was, I'd humbly say that my vanilla espresso stout is really worth for giving it a go with the quality coffee grains. Yeah, maybe it is. It's a recipe I've been rebrewed the most and I love it. I always use Lavazza Arabica coffee. Beans freshly grinded. Cheers. Give me your contact information and I will pass that on to Fredrik from the Café Roastery, Café Roastery Koppar, and he will send you your fresh specialty coffee. I got four bags of coffee from uh, Fredrik. One was just a little small amount, just had the word Mustig on it. Um, so I'm not gonna discuss that one, but the other three. I got the Ethiopian coffee, which I used in this one. I also got the uh, Espresso number no. two, I think he called it. The third one was just called Light Roasted. If I remember it correctly. The third one, the light roasted one, was more of a, say, fruity coffee, if you would say that. And uh, none of them were actually like dark roasted. Even the espresso coffee was, it was darker than the other. And the espresso coffee number two, it has more of a coffee, coffee taste. The uh, Ethiopian coffee, to me, more earthy, more like chocolatey, especially when cold brewed. They were uh, very good coffees extremely good coffees and very different. The last time I tried an Ethiopian coffee, I got this blueberry note, which I didn't get from this at all. As a cold brew, the coffee was um, more like a chocolatey, uh, oaty, earthy. Maybe if um, Friedrich is up for it, he will send me some um, other uh, kinds of coffee as well to experiment with. I don't know actually how many uh, different types he has, but um, they're always experimenting over there. Just not with different beans, with different blends, and the way you roast the coffee changes it all together, so it's a never-ending story, just like with brewing. For this beer, I decided to add a cold brew. But I decided to um, pasteurize it before adding it. And I added it at end of fermentation, not after fermentation, at the end of fermentation, if any oxygen would get in there. And of course it will. You will always get oxygen when you add something. The yeast are still active, so they would hopefully scrub that out. So that's a way to do it. Add it at the end of fermentation. You could add a cold brew. You could uh, just brew it regularly. You could 
why not just add the coffee itself and then cold crush it down? You could add coffee at um, flame out or even after flame out. I wouldn't boil the coffee. I don't know what really would happen if you add it at um, the um, mashing. Sounds weird to me. You could do a tincture with coffee and uh, liquor and add it. Then again, I would add it at uh, the end of fermentation. If you really want it, you could add it uh, to the keg. Why not? If you have a filter in there, I have some filtering system. I'm gonna put up some widgets on that in the future as well, how to add stuff to the keg in a good way. Yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this one up now, guys. We have the uh, first coffee brewed, which turned out good. Fredrik, if you're watching this, hopefully you are. I'm saving a bottle for you and big congratulations to Jabalini for winning the coffee competition. So guys, I think that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber. If you want even more content and want to support the channel, why don't you check out my Patreon page and of course all of the other videos. So cheers guys. Thanks again for watching. Dog turns out.